Time's up. Let's do this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second game here in the Stormhalt episode two. We have with us a pretty exciting game from the first game, and that would be um, going towards Candy, of course. So here, this is actually going to be a showcase match. Um, the Stormhalt is about two segments, by the way. Uh, we've got the, in the first first segment a best of five showcase match between two teams from Southeast Asia, and in the second segment, we're probably going to have. Um, some pretty good podcasts with a little bit extra talk, trying to understand some draft, some strategy, and yeah. So far, I believe we are just waiting for um, both teams to get into the lobby. But yeah, I am Babel, and I hope you guys enjoy my cast here from the first game. Of course, this is my third day casting here, so the storm a lot of um, extra catch up I need to do in terms of strategies, in terms of uh, talents, in terms of. Um, just making sure I know what I'm talking about. But right, so so far it seems like it's um, it's a very exciting day because Candy just won the first game, 1-0 for me, really happy. I have a bit of a side bet going in um, with some of my friends from Singapore and uh, also some friends from Philippines. They they did say that they would really like to see the gaming win. I told them that Candy is so far undefeated on screen. And um, they haven't lost a single map, and it seems like they're not looking to lose one yet. So, in general, the nutshell from the first game was pretty nice to see that you have you have some of those cr critical, crucial heroes banned away, and that includes the Tasada and Tyrael against Candy. Tyrael was snatched away, Tasada was banned, and you've also got Nova getting banned as well. So, I think that you know. Vaxi wasn't able to pick Nova, Ray wasn't able to pick Tasada, wasn't able to pick his favorite Tyrael, but they still are able to win the game. That says a lot. It says a lot about the team's um, capability to work around drafts and how prepared they are to play you know, that game there. They did decide on the map, that's why they're pretty comfortable. Right, so going in here, we have with us the second game, and it seems like CLG Call Level Gaming from the Philippines will decide whether they want to go for map pick or first pick. In the first game, it was pretty clear that um, Candy decided to go for map pick, and they were able to uh, pick up the map first, right? So here, it would be up to CLG to decide what they want, and they have decided to go for the map. So let's change the overlay go into the map pick screen. So because of the lack of a draft mode so far in Heroes of the Storm, I'm actually going to have to do this manually and that's actually going to take me some time. Right? It's um, I wish it's a lot faster but the program that I work with is very old school. It's developed in 1998. It's not good enough. So I, I think that it's going to take some time. So game 2 by the way, game 1 goes to Candy. Game 2 in a BO5 and we will have the map pick going towards CLG. Call level gaming from the Philippines. They did tell me this is the last time they're actually going to use this name. And if they win today or they lose today, they're going to be done with this. They're going to call themselves a new name, which will be unveiled at the end of uh, today's uh, show. Uh, pretty excited for them, actually. Uh, nice to know that they, they have so much creativity to decide on multiple names. I I personally kind of find Call Level Gaming pretty fair and fine. So that's good. So that's it. We have CLG picking up Haunted Mines. Haunted Mines is my favorite map out of all five maps because it's the shortest map um, to cast. No, I'm just kidding. It's the it's the best map. You really have a lot of strategy involved in the bottom part of that map, the, under, the undergrounds. You really just want to go in and kill those ghouls, pick up those skulls, and have a pretty big skull golem at the end of the you know the day there. So it seems like uh, CLG picking up Haunted Mines here means that they really have trained a lot for this map and I just can't wait to see you know the results of that training there so that's it now actually gonna go into the um, picking phase and we have with us the first pick and first ban going towards candy just gonna try and put up their logos here so here we have candy against CLG Call Level Gaming. They don't really have a logo so I created that for them. Don't flame me for that. I'm not a, a graphic designer. I think it looks fine. I hope it's I hope it's acceptable at the end of the day, right? So the first ban, it's actually going to be uh, coming up from Candy. It's interesting to see that Candy's ban have so far been very standard. And you know, here we go. The first ban is going to be Zara Tool. Pretty standard like a, you know, Zara Tool 
it's really one of those series that Kenny just decided not to play against. They, they were, there were some games that they decided to allow Zero too, but so far I think they're pretty happy with allowing um, other heroes apart from those that were banned in the first game against, you know, uh, against CLG, Cere Cerebro's team, right? Call level gaming. So they are gonna ban Zero Tool straight up. Next, we're also gonna see the second ban coming out from Call Level Gaming, and it does seem like it's gonna be the Tassadar again. I'm telling you. Yep, there we go. Tassadar gonna get banned as well. Tassadar is pretty sick because Tassadar, it's uh, it's the recipe behind Candy's success for a lot of games, a lot of games. Um, in fact, I'll say that Tassadar so far has got a 70% screen time with Candy. And they they really just steamroll all those games. They want games even without playing Tassada, so it's fine. But whenever you have Tassada, it really just hard counters a lot of those stealth heroes. Which is why I believe that if Tassada is gonna get banned here, you really don't don't want to ban Nova out. But yeah, we'll see. So next ban actually is gonna come out from Team Candy. And I am pretty sure they are going for the same the same set of ban here. And yes, it is actually gonna be that Uther. Uther gonna get banned as well. You have to support God tier support in my opinion, banned away. Zara tool is fantastic, but it's also banned away as well. Maybe Call Level Gaming gonna decide a little bit differently moving forward. But boy, they don't have first pick here. They need to decide whether they wanna ban a Tyrell or they still wanna ban a Nova. If they if they ban Tyrell, Nova is gonna get complete dominance in this game because Tassada has banned already. So it's like I think teams so far haven't really figured out the you know the crux of ban strategies, and they are just not so good with drafts yet. But we are going to see that Tyrell ban away. Yep, Ray's not gonna be happy. He's not able to play Tyrell in the first game because it got snatched, and he's also not gonna be able to play Tyrell in the second game because it got banned. So. It's really just not his day. He's just not able to play Tyrell in a proper game here in the Storm Hall. He's just not able to do it. Right, so here we have with us the first pick. First pick will still go towards Candy. And yep, there we go. Snap pick Nova. You gotta be kidding me. Picking up Nova after Tassada's ban away means steamroll. You have seen Vexy's Nova before. Alright, if you haven't, that beast was able to land precision strike all the way across the map. So don't joke with Vexy when it comes to Nova. You really just want to make sure that Nova is not picked up. So far, I think. Um, by the way, if you have any questions about the draft mode, if you've got any question about you know the way maps were being picked, you can always feedback to our business C email below the tweet uh, the Twitch channel here. Just. Go there and just send us an email. Let us know what you think about this uh, this competitive draft that we that we like to talk about. It's good to, to see that you know we have some extra insights. It's good. I really like to have insights going into how things are are run. And here we have Nova get, getting picked. So CLG now gonna decide on their two heroes. Uh, they haven't really decided on anything yet. Um, I feel that. They might want to try and snatch Feldstead. Feldstead is just so tried and tested in the first game. It was picked up as the first pick. One of two first picks coming up from um, Candy. They they decided to go for Anubarak and Feldstead, if I recall cl uh, correctly. So here we have CLG picking up, yes, the Feldstead and the Arthurs. Arthurs is still not my cup of tea. If, if it's going to be the same Syndra goes to Arthurs, I feel that Power level gaming is going to have a lot of trouble in the second game as well. It's not to say Syndra Gosa is not good, it's viable, but you really need to have a lot of push mechanic. And it's like those kind of heroes that help you win more. It's not, it's those kind of skills, sorry, that helps you win more. It's not those kind of skills that, that help you win. You know, if you're winning, it helps you win more, but if you're losing, it doesn't help you win at all. And I feel that that's where it's a trouble. It's not even a stun, it's just slow going forward. So I think that's, that's where it gets a little tricky for them. But we're gonna have that Feldstat to work with. And Feldstat is um is very good. Feldstat, shock and all, hands down, some pretty good skills. Um a lot of AoE burst damage coming in. They, they might just need some playmaker going forward. That's where Nazebo came into play there for the first game. But here we, we might not see that, but it's fine. So we're gonna have Feldstat Arthurs being picked up here by Call Level Gaming. And going forward on Candy's side, they're gonna go with two picks right now. So 
for all of you who haven't watched the first half of the show, um, the ban, the, the draft is being done like this. Um, both teams ban one hero each. They're gonna ban a total of four heroes, and then we're gonna pick the first team's gonna pick one, and then the uh, opposing team's gonna pick two, then two, 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 one, and then that's gonna be the end of the draft there. So two heroes for Team Candy. They're now gonna have to pick two. Let's see. It's gonna be. I'm guessing it's gonna be Anub Arak against him. Aki only plays Anub Arak. And it's not even a factor to consider because you don't have the ability to ban it out. And it's not like um, it's a respect ban or something like that. They really need to find the magic to break Candy apart. You know, Candy so far is just crazy strong. So we're gonna have pretty standard pick. Um, seems like they're gonna switch carry. So we have Anubarak as well as Tychus getting picked up here by Candy. Tychus, very strong, very good. What I like about Tychus is the fact that it's also one of those tried and tested heroes coming into Heroes of the Storm. You've got Felstead on one end, you've got Tychus on the other. It's kind of fair to see that they're not on the same side. A lot of damage can come in, and Odin is like a second health, second life for uh, Tychus, which is why it's really good to see that. So now back to CLG. They will have two more picks, and they decide on Malfurion and Kerrigan. Wow, okay. So they still want to stick to their guns. They want to stick to Kerrigan one want to stick to Arthur's, that's fine. They switched up Feldstead um, in exchange for Tychus and they will also now go for that Malfurion. So it seems like Regas not really gonna be that cup of tea, they're gonna go for that. Uh, those kind of heroes there. Pretty standard stuff. And I think so far it looks pretty good. Right, so Malfurion, personally, I think Malfurion's pretty strong. Um, I feel that Malfurion is one of those heroes that could definitely bring about a lot of good plays. You just need to make sure that you have the ability to, to just execute them. So going forward, back to Candy side, I, th I think they decided to pick up um, Brightwing and Diablo. Brightwing is definitely on Kira once again. Diablo is going to be the tank here. Makes a lot of sense, they don't have a good tank, so they're going to go for that. They're pretty good stuff on their side. And that's going to be it for them. Diablo is going to get picked up. And the last pick here is going to come out from Team Call Level Gaming. And I think it is actually going to be a specialist here. Wow, it's Gaslow. You got Gaslow. Haven't seen Gaslow ever. Like, ever. So it is going to be Gaslow. It is going to be pretty strong to see that. And I am pretty excited to see that they've got some pretty good synergy going forward. But man, it is going to be that Gaslo. You got to be kidding me. Gaslo is a specialist that's very good in the NC. I think picking for mines, Gaslo really just um, helps the team all the way up at the uh, at the ground level, you know, against mercenaries and stuff like that. So we're going to have draft completed on both sides. On Candy, it's going to be Nova, Nubarak, Tychus, as well as Brightwing and Diablo. And on Cal Level Gaming, we're going to see that very exciting looking Arthas, Feldstad, Kerrigan, Malfurion, and Gaslo going into game here. Nice to see that it's going to be a 1-0 already, and uh, seems like they're also going to switch sides. This is actually pretty nice to see coming from both teams. Although it doesn't really have a bearing in Heroes of the Storm, but switching is like, uh, it, base, it is based on who creates the game, I think. But it costs a lot of work for me because I actually have to flip around the score a fair bit. So here we go. And introducing the teams on the blue and red, the teams for this game. We're going to have some pretty good game here, guys. Pretty excited to see that. I'm gonna remove the drafts. I'm sorry, forgot to to do that there. All right. So here we go. Um, the team on the blue is gonna be Cow Level Gaming. And Cow Level Gaming, we have Cerebro playing as the Kerrigan is somehow. Uh, Akantel onto the Arthas. We've also got Panayuza onto the Malfurion. Kalistro onto Feldstad. A little bit of engagement happening there, but no serious damage. Yet. Gaslo gonna get played by Irichi. And on the raid team, we have Candy. Candy by far so far a 1-0 in his game in this series. They're gonna have Kiro on the bright wing. Taika's gonna get played by Ray. We've also got Vexi playing onto his favorite Nova. And it seems like Diablo there is gonna be played by Candy. As last but not least, we have got Maki onto the onto that Anubarak. Pretty standard stuff. So going into this game. 1-1. So far, level's pretty fair, pretty fine. Borderline offensive stuff already. Candy has onto Pony. Not the best mount for Diablo, but it seems like they really like stuff like that. Still fine. 
so far I'd like to say at this point in time that there's a lot of ganky potential on both teams you've got that Arthur's for stun, you've got the Cerebro there for the primal grab, some pretty good gank seals from on that Assassin, and also a stun on Malfurion. Whereas for the raid team, you've got, you know, just Diablo with overpower, not gonna do a lot of damage, but Maki with two stuns, mind you, and a frag grenade coming in from Ray. So still, we'll be able to deal some damage. What I like about this laning from the blue team is that it's very concentrated for bottom. Uh, make sure that all four stays alive. is gonna try and solo because he can just solo so well with all those turrets spotting out you know areas in the high uh, grasses there pretty good stuff Maki is gonna get spotted out of here by Malfur nothing much you can do meanwhile it seems like a little bit more extra damage MPL lands a cerebral oh man he doesn't want to here. and it's not gonna be enough health flame is gonna connect there dealing some damage but Kenny is gonna try and pull back so mine's gonna open in 10 seconds and um, systematically you normally have about at 1 minute 30 seconds into the game, both teams going into the Sage Golden Moon, but it seems like that's not going to be possible for this game so far. There goes the stun on Kiro, Kiro dropping really low, and it seems like first blood once again go to the blue team. And an overpower is going to be used onto Cerebro, but he's going to try and pull back a two-man stun coming from Impel. And Vexi going with some damage, but still too slow. Barrel Strike from Maki not going to connect, unfortunately. They're also going to try and pull back now. Candy S on the Diablo dropping really low, they're also going to go into the mines now. Gaslow, gonna try and uh, snatch the scouts away from Ray. Might be able to do that because he's actually in that area of those scouts, and Ray's not gonna get those scouts despite taking them. But it's gonna be good because he's still able to pick up the kill at the end, which is fine. Now on this side, this engagement, Gamaki dropping really low. Ray just gonna try and protect him a little bit, but here comes from behind. That stun from the Arthas is not gonna connect on the uh, Nubarak, but it will pick off the uh, the uh, uh, Tychus. So Tychus will go down, and that's about it. I can't tell really manning up here. One man's against four. Where's the team? The team is just not joining. He's just buying time right now while the team goes for scouts. So far 16 is the 38 skull count. And we got Vexi coming in from the top half of this um mines. Kiro just behind. Kiro's gonna have to clean up the mines there. A team has got the extra skull so far. 44 is to 24. 32 skulls remaining. It's gonna be 46 against 24 real soon. And it's gonna be 30 skulls in this um skull golem here. So blue team really want to make sure they can actually go in here, but here comes the stun. Kiro gonna get stunned up here, dropping really low. No extra support for him. He's actually really dying, but still not going down yet. And Arthas is not able to pick him up. Yes, he will do that at the end of the day with the Frozen Tempest last hit there from four. Ray dropping as well, but that's gonna be the Tychus using overkill onto the Arthas. Arthas kills him, but it's not gonna be in time. Down goes also uh, himself, and that's gonna be one for one exchange in the position. But so far, so good for the Ray team. They still have space for those scouts. Now gonna try and knock on a grip golem. They have 50, so they go more than half right now. You wanna have more than 7 extra count, but more than 50, it's fine, it's safe because of a few reasons. Namely, the fact that, you know, once you have above 50 skull count, you have just bigger golem, and you really just wanna have the bigger golem for the first few. Gaslow so far hasn't really made, you know, shown us his magic yet. We might see an 8 minute push coming in from Yuji. He's already knocking onto those towers very quickly. And he's pushing a lane that the golem isn't pushing. So that's interesting to see. Ray with a frag grenade onto the Sage Golem. Really just pushing the Sage Golem forward, just making sure that it gets within range of those towers there. Unfortunately, tower still dies. Now we have the hot cam going to the blue team. Maki joins Ray all the way up here and top half of this. And yes, not able to ride a pony there till Kingdom come. We'll be able to try and dismount. Blue team's go opting for uh, what looks like a little bit of a defensive position. Raid team has got 76 skull count golem. So here comes the puny skull golem for the blue team. And for the raid team, this big badass monster is going to join them here. Clearly, it looks like they're not going to be able to defend this spot. Unless they've got all five. So they've got all five here. Which is good. Nova also going to try and join this top fray. Now raid golem going to try and pummel its way through. Oh boy, there goes a little stun, not gonna affect the golem though. Now it's gonna deal damage on the tower, really full HP here. And there goes Impel on two, here comes the overpower and it seems like Arthur's gonna get caught out here by the golem. And also the golem lands a stun, oh my god, that is by no chance. We got some really good land skills coming up from the raid team. And the golem just made sure after the Lich King took the fall there. Another overpower, another charge, Kalistro this time around felt sad, looking like it's gonna take the fall. No stun from golem, but it's gonna be now Ray with over gonna pick that one up there now also gonna use that on the four the four is dropping really low uh, it seems like on the flip side we've got 
Nova catching up against Gaslow here, dropping really low. Level 9, no level 10 yet. So not able to pick up that kill there. And here comes yet another overpower from Diablo. Cerebro playing as a Kerrigan. Little trouble there. There goes the stun. Connects on Diablo. That's about it. Ray Golem gonna try and fall out with this push. We've got four men still alive. Five, in fact, still alive from the Ray team. Meanwhile, two devs already on the blue. 50% health. So far on the Ray Team Golem, no timing whatsoever. And here comes yet another overpower on He keeps getting caught out like that, but it seems like this time it's planned. Ray takes the fall, precision strike, level 10, Ray Team goes in, picks up more kills. Now level 11, still gonna snowball, wiping tower after tower here. Second one, looking like he's gonna take the fall as well. Kiro dropping really low, Candy S gonna try and fall back. Maki blocking them, no idea what he's doing there, but we'll be able to run away. Irichi with a very, very big laser cannon but it's not gonna be enough to take down the golem golem still gonna deal some damage on fort but i think that golem's gonna take a little bit of a rest right now and that's about it seven minutes in nine is to eleven rate team crazy strong you gotta be kidding me that engagement level 10 the moment he level 10 vexy the quick precision strike and that just further advanced the push there so well beetle's gonna deal some damage maki being really sly about it not gonna be enough though, but it's still fine. Here comes the snatch and em em Emerald win. Oh my god! He just stole the stage golem there. Kalistro, a little bit of trouble there. Dropping reload. Kiro might just pick up this kill, but the barrel roll's gonna save the felt set a little bit. Mafurin, unfortunately, not gonna be so lucky up against Nova. And Akatel once again on the Arthas. Precision strike's gonna land. He goes, look at him fly. Oh my god, it's like a nice team puck right there. More fun in Universal Studio Singapore. Look at that. Wow. Such trajectory. Overkill. So, Raid team now gonna try and push. Time to look into the talent for both sides. We got blue team, also level 10, Maelstrom, standard stuff, shock and awe, uh, gravity O bomb, pretty good stun skill. Like to see that synergy, that tranquility is gonna be used as well, just to heal. It's not really gonna have that silence effect. And Ragosa once again on Arthas. No ghoul yet. And hold that time, that engagement's gonna happen here. Cerebro not diving in. Okay, we're gonna pull back there. So, back to the Raid team's talents. We have Emerald win as usual, Odin. Precision strike, standard stuff, lightning breath on candy. Yes, you gotta be. This guy opting to not go for apocalypse, but decides to go for lightning breath as well as locust swarm on Maki. Let me think about that. Okay, um, I think that apocalypse is not being used in this instance for one main reason. It could be a misclick, but generally it's because of the fact that you don't have much of a playmaker. But Win. A very effective pushes all four from the blue team back and down goes Malfurion already. Here comes the gravity bomb, it's gonna stand on two. Kiro gets drilled in, Ray uses Odin, but here comes the lightning storm from Diablo from behind. He picks up enough and it's still gonna kill. The whole team goes down, it's a team wipe. And the cow got munched down to beef, steak, and we have also got a rip eye, tenderloin. It's just going around the house here so far. Candy steam rolling once again, gravity bomb dealing damage, setting up the skill. Have the lightning breath from behind, that stinky breath from Diablo. So OP. Nothing can stop Diablo's lightning breath, by the way. Absolutely nothing. So here we have mines opening and Ray Team going all the way down to the underground mines already. They're gonna try their best to try and pick up all these skulls. Looking for 100 skull uh, count on this golem next. We've also got a Sitch golem down for one minute plus on the blue team side. Uh, hard cam is still alive, 54 and counting. Do note. CLG on the blue team picked this map. Oh my god, Pano is a little bit of trouble so far. You gotta use Tranquility. Gotta try and pull back, but it's not gonna be enough. No damage yet. That's gonna heal him a little bit. It seems like Nova's not gonna be, pick, gonna be able to pick up this kill on Melfurion, but there goes the last snipe and it's gonna be enough. And Richie comes from behind. Vexi out of mana. A little bit of right now. Gonna be fine. Now back to the underground mines. Very bright once again. A lightning Breath gonna try and fry them. He's gonna cook an egg. He cooks a Kerrigan instead. I can tell now a little bit of trouble. He goes down once again. I've got Ultica Felstead there. Gonna be able to lay an egg, I mean, um, run away. So he's gonna be able to run away there quickly, and that's gonna be it, but we still have Kiro. And the support is picking up the kill! Down goes Feldstead! Kiro, man! Level 14, doing a lot of work there. Griff Golem goes down. It's not a 100 skull count yet, but it's 98. So that's a lot, it's close enough. Cow level gaming, once again, find himself on the back foot. Level 12 against level 15. Great team, so far ahead. Candy, of course, Candy is from Singapore and Call Level Gaming is from Philippines. So far, looks like they are struggling. We've got the hot cam gonna get challenged here by the Ray team. Blue team is not in a position to defend it again. Some beetles gonna spawn, but that's about it. Vexi gonna pick up the sentry uh, tower as well. 
So golems will spawn by the way from where they die So that's good. So if, if it died here, it's gonna spawn here. That's good So that goes to stun is not gonna connect on anyone Malfur a little trouble behind he comes over power once again precision strike is gonna land on two I uh, can tell takes a little bit of damage, but now goes fell instead cerebro goes down That's gonna be most of the people from the blue team and a big emerald win from Kiro Pushes Malfur in all the way back and Diablo comes in slaps him down goes in for the kill and one big slap across the face All that's left is Gaslow Gaslow Looking like he's able to make a difference in this game. Gravity bomb can get used here. There goes the stun. There goes the reel in. But core is dropping 20%, 15, 10, 0. Down goes the second core for the blue team. Candy picks it up once again. And oh god. Crazy stuff here. I'm unfortunately not able to see the stats there or in terms of damage whatsoever. But it's pretty good. So nice to see everyone use the ultimate except for Felt's that died a little bit too prematurely. Still pretty good stuff there coming from both sides. Like to give them credit for that. So here we have the score. In terms of takedown, we have got 24 takedown on Kiro. You gotta be kidding me. That guy is playing as Brightwing. That's a QT dragon not meant for killing. But he's gonna be able to take down 24 kills. Um, along with the rest of his team, of course. Two deaths, that's fine. Mechanics 44, that's about it. Top skull uh, hunter, or rather ghoul hunter, will be Diablo. Diablo, you can see just so much fearsome power in that. He's just being irritating, a beef king nonsense. You really don't want to deal damage to him, but you just can't stop him. And there's nothing that the blue team could have done in that instance. In terms of EXP differences, we're now looking at about 26, 27, um, 27, 28,000 difference. 28,000, yeah, I think about 28,000 e EXP difference. Majority of that came from four. It came from the first golem. It's really good that you pick up those golem ASAP. You really want to pick that up first because that first golem means a lot. It means the world to that game there. So that's where I think that um, everything started go started going down south for the blue team for cow level gaming in that instance there. Right, so once again, hope you guys enjoyed the cast, man, and that would be Haunted Minds. We have got the Rake team winning so far 2-0 up against Call Level Gaming. They're looking to make yet another win, securing the completely undefeated streak on Candy. Seems like so far it's looking like it's a steamroll, but we're pre I'm pretty excited. I'm really excited about this series here. You got some really awesome play. Vexy with that Nova. You saw the absolutely good position on the first precision strike. Took down two men and also helped level the team to 11 instantaneously. That, my friend, is a hell of a... That's a hell of a Nova. You gotta be kidding me, man. Um, Anubarak in that game, unfortunately, wasn't even land enough stun, but I think they did his work. Diablo is my personal MVP going forward. Diablo was just able to catch out Arthas twice in the early part of that game there and also was able to catch up Feldstat with the overpower he's just always so close to the gate that he's able to pick them off, pick them out and knock them back and they go down very easy simple stuff from the raid team alright so that's it I'm actually going for another 5 minutes break and we'll be back again with game 3 between um, Cow Level Gaming from the Philippines as well as Candy from Singapore I'm Babel, hope you guys enjoyed that cast, see you guys in a while don't go anywhere